Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Air India preliminary report cites fuel cutoff action and crash investigation. MBAA says climate report criticizing, bizaf flawed and incomplete. Sonex High Wing's second flight brings encouraging performance. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Air India preliminary report cites fuel cutoff action in crash investigation. Barely a month after the first major Boeing 787 accident, a preliminary report indicates that something may have been amiss in the cockpit. The tragedy took the lives of 241 people in the aircraft, with one improbable survivor and another 19 souls on the ground. On the day of the accident, the aircraft started rolling out at 8737 UTC. The prelim notes that, quote, the aircraft achieved the maximum recorded airspeed of 180 knots IAS at about 8842 UTC, and immediately thereafter, the engine one and engine two fuel cutoff switches transitioned from run to cutoff position, one after another, with a time gap of one second. The engine one and two began to decrease from their takeoff values as the fuel supply to the engines was cut off. In the cockpit voice recording, one of the pilots is heard asking the other, why did he cut off? The other pilot responded that he did not do so. The CCTV footage obtained from the airport showed ram air turbine getting deployed during the initial climb immediately after liftoff. No significant bird activity is observed in the vicinity of the flight path. The aircraft started to lose altitude before crossing the airport perimeter wall. There was an apparent attempt to relight the GE NX 1B70 power plants, but this occurred too late into the takeoff attempt. The aircraft collided with ground structures before the engines could spool up. After the break, hydroplane achieves full flight rotor speed. Meet the first of a new generation of the M-Class family. The M700 Fury. An aircraft worthy of the name and indomitable force. The M700 Fury transcends traditional limits with more power, blistering performance, a finely appointed interior, and the luxury of what matters most, time. Experience the Fury. Join the legacy. Direct Fly USA proudly introduces the new Alto NG, a single engine, two seat light sport aircraft for the North American market. This simple all metal aircraft design provides low maintenance cost, easy, comfortable access, and responsive flight controls. Equipped with a Rotax 912 engine and a ballistic parachute, the Alto NG is reliable and safe. Learn more about the Alto NG at directflyusa.com. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Hydroplane achieves full flight rotor speed. Hydroplane brought hydrogen fuel cell powered rotorcraft flight one step closer to fruition with its successful demonstration of full rotor flight speed on a hydrogen fuel cell driven rotor transmission test stand. The achievement is part of the work being done under Hydroplane's XTEC 8 Phase 1 SBIR contract with the Army. The contract was awarded in fall 2024 and calls for both outlining the expected capabilities and performance of the hydrogen fuel cell power plant for a variety of Army uses, as well as conducting a prototype demo for vertical lift. Volt Aero debuts HPU-210 hybrid power plant at AirVenture. Volt Aero is making what it calls its high-powered debut in the U.S. at next week's EAA AirVenture by having its HPU-210 hybrid power unit on exhibit for the first time in the U.S. Volt Aero will also have open reservations for production slots of its propulsion system for home-built, kit-built, and light aircraft. The HPU-210 is billed as a game-changer for GA, with its combination of a 150-kilowatt Kawasaki Ninja H2SX-derived piston engine with a 60-kilowatt electric motor. Maryland State Police Rescue Over Holiday Weekend Maryland State Police Aviation Command completed a rescue over the long weekend, hoisting up the victim of a UTV accident in the backwoods with their AW-139. Maryland State Police Aviation Command publicized their success with modest and humble fanfare, simply noting their involvement with a succinct description of the incident. It's interesting to note the method, in a sense, given the assumption that backcountry rescues are specialist missions in some people's minds. The state police operate a fleet of 10 AW-139s from seven bases. Jetson 1 demonstrates rescue capability with mountain flights in Poland. 
Jetson got an unusual invite from the GOPR Polish Mountain Rescue Team. Try out a pair of their production single-seat eVTOLs in a rescue scenario. The team traveled to southern Poland with some Jetson 1s in tow, trying out a number of practice scenarios in the local mountainscape. The single-seat nature of the 1 apparently didn't cause much issue in terms of rescue ops, intended to provide rapid transport to the very first of the first responders. Under that mission profile, the Jetson is meant to ferry the first medic to the scene. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. NBAA says climate report criticizing BizNav is flawed and incomplete. NBAA is pushing back in a big way on a recent report by the International Council on Clean Transportation that it says provides an incomplete and inaccurate depiction of business jet emissions and private aviation in general. The ICCT report claims that private jets are, quote, a large and growing source of air and climate pollution, end quote, and says that a typical aircraft emits about 810 tons of greenhouse gases in a year, or about the equivalent of 177 cars. The report goes on to propose that taxing private jets could generate substantial revenue to support decarbonization in aviation. MBAA's Ed Bolin noted that the report failed to acknowledge that business aviation has reduced its emissions by 40 percent over the past 40 years, and that new aircraft and engines are 35 percent more efficient than earlier models. Bolin also said, quote, the report's authors draw their conclusions by leaning heavily on a dubious extrapolation of flight tracking data that, by the author's own admission, includes a double-digit percentage of flights with, quote, incomplete departure or arrival information, end quote. He also noted that the report disregarded the fact that business aviation accounts for less than 1 percent of all transportation emissions. In addition, the industry has set a goal of achieving net zero carbon emissions by 2050. After these messages, Sonic's high wing second flight brings encouraging performance. It's time to upgrade your power plant to the first FAA certified clean sheet engine design in over 60 years. Delta Hawk's jet fuel powered liquid cooled turbocharged engine produces turbine performance at 40% better fuel efficiency of typical reciprocating engines, while also achieving exceptional reliability and significant reduction in cost of ownership. Reserve your engine package today at DeltaHawk.com. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Looking for a new generation of proven and efficient aviation power plants that boast modern engineering, electronic ignition, and both direct and gear drive systems? With 100 horsepower to 240 horsepower, the Skyline and Redline engines offer uncommon value in an overpriced industry. Whether you are looking for fixed wing or rotor, MW Fly Americas has been established to service the American market with dedication and expertise. MWFlyAmericas.com Welcome back. Sonic's high wing second flight brings encouraging performance. Sonic's aircraft's first venture into high wing design aircraft performed its second test flight just after the 4th of July weekend and flying at various throttle settings, but limited to 80% per UL engine break in instructions, which yielded some solid performance during its 20 minute flight over Whitman Regional Airport. Sonic's advisory board member and test pilot Joe Norris put the aircraft through its paces as it orbited the airport at 2,500 feet and logged a very successful flight. The aircraft climbed very well at an average 1,200 FPM at 80% throttle and showed good level flight speeds with 61% throttle giving 150 knots. Engine temps were again within limits. After the maiden flight on June 30th, Sonic fixed the nagging door latch, adjusted the control rigging, and installed the wheel pants and gear leg fairings. Most of those contributed more or less to improved aerodynamics as flight testing will continue to gather data for performance specs that will be summarized in the next few weeks. The aircraft is powered by a Belgian 130 horsepower UL Power UL350 IS engine. It's a four-cylinder, horizontally opposed, four-stroke UL350i engine, modified to a higher compression ratio, and runs on Avgas or Mogas 9798. Sonex also has options for the Aero-V, Jabiru 330, and Rotax 9 series engines available. 
And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.